Hey, y'all. Welcome back to all my returning experiencers. If this is your first experience, welcome. Come on in. Hey, my name is Hathor Hendricks, and this is my channel, The Hathor Experience. This is a lifestyle slash variety channel, so I'm going to be giving you a little bit of this and a little bit of that and everything in between, so if you can pick up what I'm putting down, be sure to like this video, comment down below, holla holla at your girl, let me know that you came through. Share this video with anybody that you think would benefit from hearing it and subscribe so that you will be notified the next time that I upload a video. So you've seen the title. Let's go ahead and get into it. Are self-care and self-help toxic? I was inspired to make this video by cruising and perusing the streets of YouTube. There are plenty of self care vlogs. There is plenty of self-help material here on YouTube. There's a plethora of it. However, I've also noticed the current influx of videos that are talking about the dark side of self-care, the dark side of self-help, and how it can become toxic. So, Today's video is all about my thoughts on this subject. So starting off, how I feel about self-help and self-care is how Cat Williams feels about self-esteem. In one of his old comedy shows, he's, he was like, simple bitch. Self-esteem is esteem of yourself, self being the operative word. How are you going to allow someone else to tell you how to feel about yourself? And that is my exact sentiment when it comes to self-care and self-help. Let me elaborate. We all have different fingerprints. No fingerprint is the same. It's the same thing with self-care and self-help. It's not one size fits all. We all have custom needs. We all have certain desires and certain things that we need that other people may not be able to relate to, and that's it, because we are not all the same person. So the best way to care for ourselves won't be the same as others, and the best way to help ourselves won't be the same as others. I think that both self-care as well as self-help become toxic because we are so hell-bent on our version of self-care looking exactly like someone else's. And that is impossible. You have to do what works for you. So sure, I know there are people on here like, self-care, going to Tulum, self-care, going to Dubai, self-care, $2,000 spa treatment, self-care, BBL, okay? I get that. I totally get that. And that may not be your ministry. That may not be what self-care looks like for you. And that's completely fine. What matters most is that we are creating the space and making the time to take care of ourselves. Again, self-care could look like a variety of different things. Self-care could also look like budgeting because you want a new car. Self-care can also look like spending more time with friends and family because they put you at ease and they make your life easier. Self-care can be taking a bubble bath and drinking some wine with things that you already have in your house and don't have to break the bank to get. Self-care can be actually taking care of your body and getting those mammograms and getting those prostate exams like you're supposed to. Self-care looks different 
different for all of us. And we have to take the time to figure out the best way to care for ourselves based on our needs, not what it looks like for other people. The same thing goes for self-help. Now, a lot of the arguments on self-help, I have to admit, I completely agree or I rather see how they can become toxic. Like with anything in life, it's all about moderation. I believe that self-help can be very important. I'm someone who personally is all about bettering myself. I love listening to Abraham Hicks and Reverend Ike and Les Brown and Wayne Dyer and Oprah and Iyala and everybody else out there. And that's all good and fine, but they all have different paths. They all had to get to their success their own way. And it's the same for us. Yes, you can take something that's worked for someone that resonates with you and apply it. But if it doesn't apply, we really have to learn to let it fly. So the first thing is hustle culture. Now, I do believe in productivity. We need movement. We need progression. That is important. However, sayings like sleep is for suckers and work until you die or hustle or die trying, these things are unhealthy because we all know that without proper rest, your body is going to burn out. It's going to set you back. You're going to get sick. It could lead to disease. So at some point, you have to reset. At some point, you have to recalibrate and self-help helps with that. Again, it's about creating space. Next, let's talk about false positivity. Now, this one I truly love. And being a person who's glass half full, I understand the importance of positivity, but I also understand how suppressing your other emotions can become toxic. If you only think that you have to be positive all the time, then you are denouncing all of your other feelings. You're denouncing your depression. You're denouncing your anger, your irritability, your frustration. And these are all aspects of yourself, very well aspects of yourself that deserve to be acknowledged and looked into. There's an opposite for everything. For light, there's darkness. Good, there's evil. Left, there's right. North, there's south. There is always an opposite. And it's important that we embrace both sides of ourselves, even if it's not what one would consider positive. Honesty is more important than being positive all the time. You have to be real with yourself. Last but not least, constantly striving and going and going. I feel like it's very easy in both the self-care industry and the self-help industry to get caught up in the escapism of it all. What do I mean by that? When it comes to self-care, it's really easy to be like, you know what? I just don't want to deal with anything. I'm just going to care for myself. Oh, this happened. Oh, self-care. Not going to deal with it. Oh, I don't feel like going to the gym. Self-care. I'm just going to eat these tacos. It's all good, girl. So what? Same with self-help. Instead of actually applying and executing the knowledge that you're learning from this self-help, instead, you read a book, you go to a retreat, and you go to another Retreat and read another book and another and another. It's like you're always looking for a new guru. You're always looking for a new life coach. You're always looking for somebody to tell you how to help yourself ways that you've already heard, but you're maybe too afraid to actually execute. So you just get lost in the whole sauce and all the positivity of if you just do this, your life will be perfect without actually engaging and executing these things, right? So that 
can become very toxic. And that's why it's important to have discernment because at the same time, it's important that we create space to care for ourselves, especially if we want to help ourselves and improve our quality of life. Same thing with self-help. So I really and truly believe that these things only become toxic when we measure the success of our self-care and our self-help to those of others. Now, sure, there's nothing wrong with finding mentors. There's no nothing wrong with looking for guidance. But when that becomes a standard that you create for yourself that you can't even reach, it becomes toxic. And we don't want that. So I have four ways that you can help liberate yourself from all of this. Let's get into it. The first is, or the first step is awareness. Knowing really is half the battle. If you know where that quote comes down, comes from, put it down in the comments. But knowing really is half the battle. Once you're aware that you haven't been caring for yourself, once you're aware that maybe you need help or guidance in a certain aspect of your life, then we can move forward. Up next is acceptance. Going back to that honesty, we have to be honest with ourselves. We have to be honest with the fact that maybe we put everyone else's needs ahead of our own, and now it's time for us to care for ourselves because we've had a burnout or our body has broken down. It's okay to be honest with ourselves if we realize that we have been sabotaging ourselves, if we feel like we have been procrastinating, if we see that we lack motivation and inspiration. Accept that about yourself so that you can understand, which is the next step. The next step is understanding. Why is a powerful word? Asking yourself, why? Why do I do this and not this? Why this and not that? Asking yourself these questions so you can get an understanding why you do what you do and why you may need to take make changes to these things. And lastly, holding yourself accountable. Once it's been brought to your awareness, once you've accepted it, once you've taken the time and made the space to understand it, now you have to hold yourself accountable. Accountable to being realistic with yourself okay, this is the self-care that I can do for myself. This is the self-care that I need right now. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't look like your favorite YouTuber. This is the help that I need right now. And it doesn't matter if it's not exactly what Oprah did to get to where she's going. She's a completely different person living a completely different life. This is about you and what you need to be the best per version of yourself. And if not the best, at least decent, okay? Because we don't even wanna get up into that whole perfection thing. Y'all know I'm a recovering perfectionist, so we don't even wanna get into that. But hey, who am I? I'm no expert, I'm no guru, I'm just Hathor, and this is my experience. So, if you like today's message, go ahead and like this video, comment down below. What are your thoughts on self-care and self-help? Do you think that one of them is toxic? Do you think that both of them are toxic? Do you think that they're the same thing? Because me, I think they're cousins, not siblings. They're related, but not directly. I would love to hear from you. And until we meet again, Take care of yourselves. Peace.